Have you ever wondered where all the plastic in your life originates from? It's a question that takes us deep into the heart of our planet, where we find crude oil and natural gas. These petrochemicals undergo a fascinating transformation through a process called polymerization. Picture this, tiny molecules known as monomers, chemically bonding together to form long chains. These chains are what we call polymers, the building blocks of the various types of plastic we use every day. Each type of plastic, be it polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride or polystyrene, has unique properties and applications. Polyethylene, for instance, is often used in plastic bags and bottles, while polystyrene is typically found in disposable cutlery and foam packaging. So, the next time you hold a plastic item, remember, it started its journey in the depths of the earth as crude oil or natural gas. Now let's follow the journey of plastic from our homes to its final resting place. Plastic, the chameleon of materials, seamlessly fits into every facet of our lives. From the phone in your pocket, the toothbrush you use, to the packaging of your favorite snack, plastic is ubiquitous. Its versatility, durability, and low cost make it a go-to material for manufacturers. But the very properties that make plastic so useful also contribute to its darker side. Consider single-use plastics, for instance. We use them briefly, perhaps for a few minutes to carry our groceries or to sip a drink, and then we discard them. But where does this discarded plastic go? Our waste management systems collect it, along with other waste, and sort it based on its type and quality. This sorted plastic is then shredded, washed, and melted to create recycled plastic pellets. These pellets serve as the raw material for new plastic products, giving discarded plastic a new lease on life. But here's the catch. Not all plastic is recyclable. Some types of plastic, due to their chemical structure, resist recycling, and the recycling rates vary significantly across regions and types of plastic. So while we may imagine our discarded plastic bottle embarking on a new journey as a cozy fleece jacket or a durable park bench, the reality is often more complicated and less rosy. Unfortunately, the journey of many plastic items does not end at the recycling plant. What happens when plastic doesn't get recycled? It's a question that tugs at the heart of our planet's health. The answer, unfortunately, is a grim tale of environmental devastation. The most visible impact of plastic pollution is the harm it inflicts on wildlife and ecosystems. Plastic debris finds its way into our oceans, rivers, and beaches, wreaking havoc on marine life through ingestion and entanglement. On land, discarded plastic disrupts habitats and poses a threat to a broad spectrum of creatures, from insects to mammals. But the damage doesn't stop there. Plastic waste gradually breaks down into smaller particles, known as microplastics. These tiny fragments can infiltrate the food chain, contaminating water sources and even ending up in the food we eat. The implications of microplastics on human health and the environment are still largely unknown, but the picture is starting to look concerning. When it comes to disposing of plastic waste, landfills and incineration pose their own set of problems. Landfills lead to soil contamination, leachate generation, and greenhouse gas emissions, while incineration of plastics releases toxic chemicals into the air, contributing to air pollution. What's more, most plastics are non-biodegradable. This means they linger in the environment for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years, marking the landscape with a near-permanent scar of degradation and litter accumulation. The environmental damage caused by plastic is undeniable and far-reaching. We are living with the consequences of our plastic use, and it's high time we face the dark side of this ubiquitous material. So, what can we do to mitigate the impact of plastic on our environment? The answer lies in an approach we're all familiar with. Reduce, reuse, recycle. This means cutting down plastic consumption, finding new life for plastic items instead of discarding them, and ensuring they get a second chance through recycling. But it's not just about recycling. It's about making smart choices right from the start. Imagine a world where the plastic we use is biodegradable or compostable, where our packaging solutions are sustainable and our consumption mindful. It's a future that is possible with the development and adoption of plastic alternatives. But, individual action alone won't solve our plastic problem. We need the support of policy and regulation. Governments, organizations and industries worldwide are stepping up, implementing regulations, banning single-use plastics, promoting producer responsibility, and incentivizing sustainable practices. Remember, each of us has a part to play in this. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Our choices today will shape the world of tomorrow.